Hey everyone, welcome back. We're doing a deep dive today into something pretty fascinating. Yeah, um, it's a big one. It really is, it's and it's exciting. Good. So we're talking about a whole new system of governance. Mm -hmm. They're calling it uh, the new city. Right. And we've been looking at some articles and research papers uh, detailing how it would all work. And honestly, I'm already hooked. I think what's so compelling about this idea is that it's not just like some, you know, pie in the sky kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it comes from a place of pretty deep frustration with the state of, you know, <laughs> right, yeah. of democracy as we know it. That feeling that decisions are being made kind of for us and not really by us. Exactly. You know, and the new city is really trying to flip that power dynamic on its head. Yeah. I mean, that's something I think a lot of people can relate to, right? That yeah. feeling of being disconnected For sure. from the decision-making process. Yeah. So, okay, we've got this radical new system that promises to address some of the biggest flaws in our current democracies. Mm. Where do we even begin with this? Well, I think the best place to start is with, uh, you know, the elephant in the room, which is money and influence in politics. Yeah. You know, you think about a system like uh, the United States. Yeah. It's no secret that lobbyists, special interest groups, wealthy donors, they all have this like disproportionate amount of influence. Huge influence yeah. on policy decisions. It's like that old saying, money talks. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but how does the new city actually change that? Like, how do they address that problem? It's about handing the reins back to the people. Okay. So imagine a system where every single citizen votes directly on every policy. Wow. Every single law. Okay. Every single budget allocation. So we're talking about like full on direct democracy here. Direct democracy on a scale that we've never seen before. So no more elected officials, no more right. Congress or Parliament. Yeah, potentially not. I mean, that's a pretty big shift. It is a huge shift. And here's the thing. When you distribute that power yeah. amongst, you know, millions of citizens, mm -hmm. it becomes basically impossible for any single entity to manipulate the system. Right. Because trying to buy off a single politician is one thing. Right. But buying off millions of voters. Yeah. Good luck. That's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying that the system like inherently prevents dictatorships because let's face it, mm -hmm. people in power don't really give up power that easily. No, they don't. It's just not how it works. But it's baked into the design of the new city. Okay. Power is constantly dispersed All and right. flowing amongst the people. Every yep. citizen is engaged, they're informed, and they're empowered to hold those in power accountable. I'm starting to see how this could be a game changer, especially in countries struggling with like yeah. corruption or authoritarian regimes. Absolutely. But how does this whole direct democracy thing actually work yeah. in practice? Like, do we all just gather in some virtual town square and start debating? Well, that's where the technology piece comes in. Okay. So at the heart of the new city is this sophisticated app uh -huh. that acts as a direct democracy platform. Okay. So it connects every citizen and allows them to vote on literally every single policy. Wait, every single policy? A single one. That sounds incredibly overwhelming. How would anyone have time to like yeah, yeah, research yeah. every issue and vote on everything? It's a valid concern, but the system is actually designed to be flexible. Okay. So citizens can choose to only vote on the issues that matter the most to them, or they can delegate their voting power right. to, you know, trusted individuals or groups. Interesting. It's kind of like a power of attorney for your political voice. I like that. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah. But how do we even make sure everyone understands, like the complexities of these policy decisions. Right. I mean, most people barely have time to read the news, right. let alone analyze complex legislation. Exactly. And that's where it gets really interesting. This app uses AI okay. to break down these complex proposals into really easy to understand terms. It's kind of like having a personal policy advisor in your pocket. Okay. So imagine watching a short AI-generated video okay. that explains exactly how you know, a proposed law on, say, renewable energy right. would affect your energy bills and the environment in your city. So instead of wading through like pages of legal jargon, yeah. you get a personalized, bite-sized explanation. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And it goes even further. Oh, yeah. The app also shows you the potential consequences of a policy, ah. both positive and negative. Interesting. So if a new law ends up having some like unforeseen negative side effects, yeah. 
citizens can simply vote again okay. to amend or even repeal it. Wow, that's incredible. It's like having a constant feedback loop, yeah. allowing the system to adapt and evolve based on what's actually happening. Exactly. But what about those big like national level decisions? Yeah. How does the new city handle those? So the app would actually have different levels of voting, okay. ranging from hyperlocal issues all the way up to national referendums. Right. And for those bigger decisions, Every citizen's vote would carry equal weight, Got it. ensuring that everyone has a say in the direction of the country as a whole. Okay, so we've got direct democracy, AI-powered explanations, and the system that can adapt to changing circumstances. Mm -hmm. What else makes the new city different? One of the things that I find the most fascinating is this idea of a customizable legal system customizable legal system. Yeah. That sounds both intriguing and a little terrifying. It's a little bit of both, right. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that citizens would have a degree of choice in the legal framework okay. that they want to live under. Wait, so I could basically choose my own laws? Well, not quite. Okay, yeah. There would be some fundamental universal laws in place to ensure, like, basic societal order. Right. So things like no murder, no assault, no theft. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Yes. But seriously, how would this customizable legal system actually work? Think of it as, like, a choose-your-own-adventure legal system. But with some important safety rails in place. Okay. So, for example, you might choose a legal framework that emphasizes rehabilitation over punishment for nonviolent crimes. Right. Or one that prioritizes environmental protection above economic growth. So it's about giving people more agency over the laws that directly affect their lives. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I see how that could be pretty appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. But I have to ask, is any of this even remotely realistic? I mean, how do you go from our current system... Yeah. To a fully functional new city. Well, it's definitely a massive undertaking. Yeah. But the creators of the new city argue that it starts with changing the way we think about power and governance. Uh, it's about empowering individuals to take control of their own destinies and to create the kind of world they want to live in. That's a pretty inspiring message. Yeah. But practically speaking, how would this transition even begin? They propose starting with pilot programs in smaller communities, okay. demonstrating the feasibility and the benefits of the new city system. Right. And if those pilot programs prove successful, yeah. they believe that the idea could spread organically, right. eventually leading to a global network of new cities connected by these shared values and a commitment to true democracy. So like a beta test for democracy 2.0. Exactly. And here's the key. Okay. They believe that once people experience the tangible advantages of direct democracy, transparency, and true empowerment, mm -hmm. they'll never want to go back to the old system. Okay, that makes sense. But wouldn't there be pushback from those in power? Sure. I mean, the people who benefit from the current system yeah. are unlikely to just step aside and hand over the reins. That's a huge challenge for sure. Yeah. Those in power rarely relinquish control willingly. Yeah. But the new city's proponents argue that the appeal of true power, right. real influence over their own lives, yeah. would be just irresistible yeah. to the vast majority of people. It's like offering people a taste of real freedom and asking them to choose between that. Get and a system that keeps them marginalized and voiceless. Yeah. It's a compelling argument. It is. Okay, well, I think we've officially stepped into some uncharted territory here. Yeah. We've laid out the basic framework of the new city, mm -hmm. but now it's time to dive into the specifics, right? Like, how would this system actually play out in the real world? Right. What are the potential benefits? And let's be honest, the potential pitfalls. That's what we'll be exploring in the next part of our deep dive. Awesome. Can't wait. We'll look at everything from how the new city would handle issues like healthcare and education right. to the potential challenges of maintaining order and security in a system based on individual freedom and choice. Okay. So stay tuned, everyone. We'll be back soon to explore all of that in more detail. Definitely. Welcome back. So last time we kind of left off talking about, you know, the idea of implementing the new city and yeah. some of the pushback that might arise. Right. Um, you raised a good point that, you know, those in power, they don't just step aside. Yeah, exactly. They've got a good thing going. Right. Why would they want to change it? I mean, you look at like the United States. Yeah. You've got these two like dominant political parties and it often feels like they're more interested in fighting each other yeah. and actually solving problems. That's a really good point. I mean, imagine a system where those parties just become irrelevant. Right. A system where citizens have the power to directly enact the changes they mm -hmm. want to see without having to wait for politicians to act on their behalf. Yeah. 
that's the promise of the new city. I can see how that would be incredibly appealing to a lot of people. Yeah. Especially those who feel disillusioned by the current political landscape. For sure. But let's get practical for a second. Okay. How would the new city actually handle those, like, everyday issues that governments have to deal with? Right. Like, say, health care or education? That's a great question. Let's start with health care. In the new city, health care wouldn't be tied to employment or income. Okay. Instead, it would be considered a fundamental right accessible to every citizen. So it's like a universal health care system. Yeah. But managed through this direct democracy app. Exactly. Citizens would have a say in how the healthcare system is structured, okay. how it's funded, and what services are covered. So no more insurance companies dictating right. what treatments you can and can't get. Potentially, not necessarily, but potentially. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is a system that's designed to be yeah. flexible and responsive to the needs of its citizens. Right. If people decide they want a single payer system, yeah. they can vote for it. If they prefer a mixed model with private options, yeah. they can vote for that too. Okay, that makes sense. But how would you ensure like quality of care Yeah. in a system where everyone has a say? I mean, wouldn't there be a risk of people voting for like cheaper options, even if they're not the best medically? That's where the AI comes in again. Remember, the app doesn't just facilitate voting. Mm -hmm. It also provides information and analysis to help citizens make informed decisions. So in the case of healthcare, the AI could provide data on the effectiveness of different treatments, okay. the cost-benefit analysis of various options, right. and even recommendations from medical experts. So it's like having an AI-powered healthcare consultant to guide your decision-making. Exactly. Right. And because the AI is impartial and unbiased, yeah. it can present that information in a clear and objective way right. without being influenced by special interests or political agendas. That's a really important point. It seems like a lot of the problems with our current systems yeah. stem from this lack of transparency and the influence of special interests. Yeah, absolutely. New City seems to address those issues head on. It does, and it applies that same logic to education. Okay. Imagine a system where parents, teachers, and students all have a direct say in how schools are run, okay. what's taught, and how resources are allocated. So no more standardized tests yeah. dictated by Ooh, some far-off bureaucracy. Yeah. No more school boards making decisions that don't reflect the needs yeah. of the local community. The new city envisions a much more decentralized and personalized approach to education, right. where communities have the freedom to create the kind of learning environments they believe are best for their children. That sounds amazing. Yeah. But wouldn't it lead to a lot of, like, inconsistency? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't you end up with some schools that are fantastic yeah. and others that are, well, not so great? That's certainly a possibility. But remember, this is a system that embraces freedom of choice and movement. Okay. So if parents aren't happy with the schools in their community, yeah. they can move to another new city. Right that offers a better educational experience. So it's kind of like a free market for education yeah. where the best schools attract the most students and resources. Yeah. Yes, but with a safety net in place to ensure that every child has access to quality education, yeah. regardless of their location or socioeconomic status. Okay, this is all starting to paint a really compelling picture. But let's shift gears for a moment and talk about one of the most fundamental aspects of any society. Right. How do you maintain order and security in a system right. based on individual freedom and choice. Yeah. I mean, doesn't that open the door to chaos and potential abuse? It's a valid concern, and it's something that the new city's designers have thought a lot about. Okay. Remember, even though the system prioritizes individual freedom, right. it also recognizes the need for collective security right. and a system of justice that's fair and equitable. So how do they balance those two seemingly contradictory goals? It comes down to a multi-layered approach. Okay. First, there would be a core set of universal laws yep. that apply to everyone regardless of their location oh, right. or chosen legal framework. Right. These laws would cover things like basic human rights, protection against violence and harm, and the enforcement of contracts. Okay, so that provides like a basic level of protection and accountability. Right. But what about those more complex legal issues like property disputes or business contracts? How would those be handled in a system with customizable laws? That's where things get really interesting. 
Okay. The new city envisions a system of AI-powered mediators and arbitrators okay. who would help resolve disputes based on the chosen legal framework of the parties involved. So instead of going to court and arguing in front of a judge, right. you'd sit down with an AI mediator exactly. who helps you reach a mutually agreeable solution. Exactly. And because the AI is impartial and objective, right. it can ensure that the process is fair and transparent even if the parties involved have chosen different legal frameworks. That sounds incredibly efficient and cost-effective. Yeah. But what about those cases where mediation fails? Right. What happens when someone breaks the law or commits a serious crime? In those cases, there would still be a system of law enforcement and consequences for wrongdoing. Okay. But even the justice system would be designed with rehabilitation and restorative justice in mind. So less about punishment and more about addressing the root causes of crime and helping people reintegrate into society. Exactly. The new city envisions a system that's focused on healing and restoration right. rather than retribution. Okay. Of course, there would still be consequences for actions that harm others, yeah. but those consequences would be designed to help individuals learn from their mistakes and become productive members of society. Okay, so we've got healthcare education and even the legal system covered. Right. What about those things that governments typically provide? Sure. Like infrastructure, public transportation, and utilities. Yeah. How would the new city handle those? All of those things would be managed through a combination of direct democracy okay. and AI-powered resource allocation. Okay. Citizens would vote on priorities for infrastructure projects, okay. determine funding levels for public transportation, right. and set rates for utilities. So instead of having like government agencies and bureaucrats making those decisions, right. it would be up to the citizens themselves. Exactly. And the AI would play a key role in ensuring that resources are allocated efficiently and effectively okay. based on the needs of the community and the priorities set by the citizens. Okay. I'm starting to see how this whole system could work. Yeah. But we've been talking about the new city in a very abstract way. Right. Can you give me some like concrete examples of how this might play out in the real world? Absolutely. Let's say a community wants to build a new park okay. in a traditional system. Yeah. They'd have to go through layers of bureaucracy, right. lobby elected officials, yeah. and wait years for the project to be approved and funded right. in the new city. Yeah. They could simply propose the park projects through the app. Okay. Present their plans right. and let the citizens vote on it directly. Interesting. If the project gets enough votes, yeah. the funding is automatically allocated and construction can begin. That sounds incredibly efficient. Yeah. But what if they're competing priorities? Right. What if some people want a park? Others want a new school. Right. And still others want improved public transportation. Yeah. How do you decide which projects get funded? That's where the democratic process comes in. Okay. Citizens would have to debate the merits of each project, right. consider the costs and benefits, yeah. and ultimately decide which projects are most important to the community as a whole. So it's not just about voting on individual projects. Right. It's about engaging in a dialogue. Exactly. Weighing different perspectives. Yeah. And making decisions that benefit the common good. Exactly. And the AI can play a role in facilitating that dialogue, yeah. providing information and analysis to help citizens make informed decisions. Okay, that makes sense. How? But I have to admit, I'm still a little skeptical. Sure. This whole system sounds too good to be true. Yeah. Are there any potential downsides or risks that we haven't considered? Of course. Mm. No system is perfect. Uh -huh. And the new city is no exception. Yeah. There are definitely some potential challenges and risks that we need to address. Well, let's dive into those then. Yep. What are some of the biggest concerns? One of the most common concerns is the potential for mob rule. Okay. If the majority gets to decide everything, yeah. what's to stop them from trampling the rights of minorities? That's a valid concern. Yeah. How does the new city address that? They propose a multi-layered approach. Okay. First, as we mentioned before, yeah. there would be fundamental universal laws that uh -huh. protect basic human rights, right. regardless of what the majority thinks. Yeah. Even if 99% of the population voted to, say, yeah. ban a certain religion, right. that law wouldn't be allowed. Okay. Those fundamental rights would be enshrined in the system's code, unchangeable by any vote. Okay, that's reassuring. Uh -huh. But what about those more subtle forms of discrimination? Yeah. What if the majority consistently votes against policies that benefit a particular minority group? Right. Even if those policies don't technically violate their rights. That's where the concept of empowered mobility comes in. Mm -hmm. Remember, 
The new city envisions a world where people can move freely between communities. Yeah. If a minority group feels marginalized in one new city, right. they can simply choose to live in a community that welcomes them. Okay, but wouldn't that just lead to self-segregation? Yeah. Wouldn't people just cluster together with like-minded individuals right. reinforcing existing divisions? It's a possibility, mm -hmm. but it's also an opportunity to create communities that are truly aligned with people's values and beliefs. Right. Imagine a world where you can choose to live in a community that prioritizes environmental sustainability, right. social justice, or yeah. religious freedom. I can see how that could be appealing. Yeah. But what about the practicalities of all this movement? Right. Wouldn't it be incredibly disruptive to have people constantly moving between communities? The new city's creators acknowledge that there would be challenges, Correct. but they believe those challenges are surmountable. Okay. They propose a system of global relocation centers that would help facilitate these moves. Oh. These centers would help people find suitable communities, right. navigate the legal and logistical aspects of relocation, right. and provide support during the transition. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. But what about the economic impact? Yeah. Wouldn't this kind of mass migration mm. create huge disparities yeah. between different communities? Right. Wouldn't some places become incredibly wealthy and others become impoverished? The new city's creators believe that the system's built-in mechanisms for resource allocation and wealth redistribution would help mitigate those risks. Okay. Remember, citizens have direct control over how tax money is spent right. and can choose to invest in communities that need support. Okay. Plus, the AI can play a role in identifying and addressing potential economic imbalances. So it's not just about individual freedom and choice. Right. It's also about collective responsibility. Yes. And ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to thrive yeah. regardless of where they choose to live. Exactly. That's the key to the new city's vision. It's a system that balances individual liberty with collective well-being. Okay, well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. We have. We've explored how the new city would handle some of the most fundamental aspects of society. Yeah. From healthcare and education to law enforcement and resource allocation. Right. But there's still one big question that looms over this whole concept. Right. Is it actually achievable? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. We've talked about the potential benefits and the ways in which the new city addresses right. some of the flaws in our current systems. Yeah. But can this utopian vision actually be translated into reality? That's what we'll be exploring in the final part of our deep dive. Okay. We'll look at the potential obstacles to implementation, oh. the cultural and political shifts that would be required, yeah. and the reasons for both optimism and skepticism about the new city's future. Awesome. I can't wait to get into that. Stay with us. So we spent the last two parts of this deep dive like really exploring the new city, and honestly, it's been mind-blowing. It's a lot to take in, for sure. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. um, but we've covered everything from, like, AI-powered governance right. and customizable legal systems to empowered mobility yeah. and this idea of a truly citizen-driven democracy. It's pretty radical. It is. Yeah. And we've talked about the potential benefits, but we've also touched on some of the yeah. challenges and the risks. For sure. So I think as we wrap things up here, the big question is, yeah. is the new city actually achievable? Right. Is this just like a utopian dream or could it actually become... A reality. That's the million dollar question. And honestly, there's no easy answer. Right. There are reasons to be both optimistic and skeptical. Okay. Well, let's start with the optimistic side then. Mm. What gives you hope that the new city could actually work? I think the biggest reason for optimism is this growing dissatisfaction okay. with traditional systems of governance. You yeah. know, all around the world, people are losing faith in their elected officials. They're feeling disillusioned by partisan politics, and they're craving a system that's more responsive to their needs yeah. and their aspirations. So the new city taps into this, like desire for change, this yearning for something better. Absolutely. It offers a vision of a future where people have real power, Yeah, where their voices are actually heard, right, and where they can directly shape the world they want to live in. That's a pretty powerful message. Mm -hmm. But even with that growing desire for change, right. There are still some major hurdles to overcome. Oh, absolutely. Right. One of the biggest is simply the scale of the transformation. Okay. We're not just talking about tweaking a few policies here. Right. Or electing different leaders. Yeah. It's about fundamentally rethinking right. how we govern ourselves, yeah. how we relate to each other, and how yeah. we organize society as a whole. 
it's a complete paradigm shift. It is a paradigm shift. And that kind of shift requires like a massive yeah. cultural and political transformation, right? Yeah, it does. It requires people to embrace new ideas, yeah. challenge old assumptions, be willing to step outside of their comfort zones. So it's not just about technology and systems. Right. It's about changing hearts and minds. It's about changing hearts and minds. And that's no easy feat. Oh, it's not. People are naturally resistant to change, right. especially when it comes to something as fundamental as how society is structured. Of course. You're going to have pushback from those who benefit from the current system. Yeah. There's going to be fear of the unknown. Yeah. And there's going to be skepticism about whether this radical new approach can actually work. So how do you overcome those obstacles? How do you convince people to embrace such a radical change? I think it starts with demonstrating the tangible benefits of the new city. It's right. about showing people how this system can improve their lives, right. how it can give them more control over their own destinies, yeah. and how it can create a more just and equitable society. So it's about proving that the new city isn't just a utopian dream, yeah. but a practical solution to the problems that we face. Exactly. And it's about addressing people's concerns, okay. acknowledging the risks, yeah. and being transparent about the challenges involved. So it's about building trust, mm. fostering dialogue, right. and creating a sense of shared ownership in this new vision. It is. And it's about starting small, okay. demonstrating success in those pilot programs, right. and gradually scaling up as people gain confidence in the system. Okay. That makes sense, but let's be real. Yeah. There's no guarantee that this will all work out. No. There's a real possibility that the new city could fail. Right. It could be undermined by corruption. Yeah. It could be manipulated by those seeking to regain power. Of course. Or it could simply prove too complex to manage in practice. So there's a lot of uncertainty about the future. There is a lot of uncertainty. But I think that's also what makes this whole concept so exciting. Okay. It's this grand experiment, this yeah. bold attempt to create a better world. And even if it doesn't succeed completely, yeah. the very act of striving for something better, pushing the boundaries of what's possible, yeah. that in itself is a worthwhile endeavor. I love that. Yeah. It's a reminder that we don't have to accept the limitations of our current systems. Right. We have the power to imagine new possibilities and to work towards creating a future that's more just, more equitable, <laughs> and more aligned with our values. Exactly. And I think that's the takeaway from this whole deep dive into the new city. Yeah. Whether this particular system succeeds or fails, right. it's a call to action. Yeah. It's an invitation to engage in those conversations that might feel uncomfortable, yeah. to challenge the status quo, right. and to contribute to building a better future. Absolutely. It's a reminder that the future is not something that just happens to us. Yeah. It's something that we create together. It is something we create together. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the new city. Yeah, thanks for having me. We hope it sparked your imagination and inspired you to think differently about the world we live in. I hope so. And the future that we can create together. 